Good morning. Warm welcome to this fourth edition of Copernicus for Regions webinars. Um, this time we look at how Copernicus supports a region in be preventing and being better prepared to natural disasters. This is a webinar is part of a series of five Copernicus for Regions webinars, and we already invite you cordially for the next one that will take place on the 9th of December and will be about how Copernicus contributes to modernize the public sector. Now, first we want to look at what is Copernicus for Regions about for those ones who are new with us. And sometimes images can say more than words and therefore we like to first show you the teaser on Copernicus for Regions, please. Did you know that the Copernicus program with its Sentinel satellites is supporting public authorities to improve our lives on a daily basis? Para mí, los datos de Copernicus y sobre todo en específico Sentinel-2, los satélites, son los nuevos ojos de las regiones costeras. Y datos Sentinel inoltre son datos abiertos, son disponibles a todos gratuitamente y esto para mí es un grandísimo vantaggio. Copernicus data are increasingly being used by local and regional authorities across Europe. Does your public administration make use of Copernicus data? Copernicus for Regions is a joint initiative between the European Commission, the European Space Agency and the network of European regions using space technologies that provides practical examples on how public administrations across Europe use Copernicus to deliver benefits to their citizens. The initiative is based on a collection of users' stories with a strong focus on public authorities. Public authorities are key users of Copernicus data. Without uh, Sentinel data, it's very difficult or nearly impossible to validate an avalanche forecast. We need people out in the field to uh, observe avalanche activity, which is often prohibited by, by poor weather conditions or the absence of daylight, especially in northern Norway. The Sentinel satellite is very important in our work, because we can gather more information about what is happening in the area. We can monitor landslides more frequently, over wide areas simultaneously, providing wider picture as uh, conventional traditional methods could say. L'utilisation des nouveaux dispositifs mis en place nous permet un suivi très précis de l'évolution de cet urbanisme et nous permet de mettre en œuvre de nouvelles solutions en termes d'aménagement du territoire et d'urbanisme pour développer le territoire tout en préservant la nature. Et crise des épaisseurs μειώνει το κόστος για τον πολίτη γιατί μειώνονται και οι ανάγκες για ενδελεχείς ελέγχους ιδιαίτερα σε δύσβατες περιοχές ή σε περιοχές που είναι δύσκολη η πρόσβαση όπως είναι τα μικρά ελληνικά νησιά. Comprendere gli effetti che questi cambiamenti producono sugli habitat e sulle specie non è affatto, affatto semplice. È chiaro che l'uso dei satelliti è un aiuto enorme. Ciò che è indispensabile per misurare esattamente Copernicus for Regions is about sharing knowledge and experiences across Europe. Copernicus for Regions also helps regional authorities to interact and share their experiences with citizens, politicians and policymakers, and in doing so, shapes the future of the programme. Copernicus for Regions is about supporting and growing the community of Copernicus regional users. You can read and watch how public administrations across Europe used Copernicus to address a variety of challenges and modernize their services. Would you like to join the ever-growing community of Copernicus users?
as you have seen in the short teaser, Copernicus is about local and regional authorities using Copernicus for benefits in the regions. And um, we want to invite you to become part of this community and use the Copernicus tools we develop. We invite you to visit our website where we have the publication, where we have a number of stories that you can look at individually. We have videos and a search engine for you to find the story that might be of interest for you. Copernicus for Regions is about sharing knowledge and experiences, best practices, and it's about uh, cooperations, interregional cooperations. We portray interregional cooperations and we want to stimulate them. And um, Copernicus it, for Region itself is a big interregional effort, and it is important to us um, for you to know that Copernicus for Regions is a work of volunteers. All the people you see who contributed to the um, co uh, collection, uh, who were reviewers, who were portrait, they are all doing this on a volunteer basis. On this occasion, we I would like also to thank our cooperation partners, the European Commission. We worked with Teodora Antonino and um, our um, uh, responsible from the European Space Agency, Mrs. Um, Alessandra Tassa. And I like also to um, thank the Nereos team, um, Mrs. Margarita Krisaki, our project and communication officer. Now, I like to give uh, the floor to um, Veronika Hand from the um, UN uh, office in Brussels and uh, who is going to moderate the discussion. Please, Veronika, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roya. Uh, as uh, Roya said, I work for the United Nations Environment Program and I'm absolutely delighted that I was asked to facilitate uh, this uh, very interesting webinar. So what are we going to talk about today? Uh, the title, as you saw, is how Copernicus supports Europe's regions to improve prevention and preparedness to natural disasters. I would like to recall adaptation gap report on the global level that was released uh, this week, actually, whilst uh, COP26 was uh, still running. And the data clearly shows that 2021 was the year in which climate change very clearly manifested itself as a serious threat to humanity not in the long term but in short term here and now and we could see it in europe and it's uh, uh, very important that the discussion is taking place today we saw uh, very severe floods in germany belgium netherlands and other parts of europe forest fires tornadoes uh, etc the growth in climate impacts is outpacing our efforts to adapt to them even if we manage to stay within the 1.5 degrees celsius some impacts of climate change are already irreversible and will be with us for many decades to come. So it is extremely important to adapt, to adapt now and to better prevent and prepare for natural disasters. We need data, we need science for that. And that's why Copernicus comes in with the information services and data that provides and the partners that are uh, at the webinar here today. European Union has a fantastic tool for this. Uh, we have the European Green Deal, uh, which, uh, which presents great opportunity from the policy level, but also implementing uh, uh, to, to mitigate uh, climate change and adapt. So we today have uh, several user stories actually to showcase how Copernicus works, the data, how they are used uh, on regional level. We will have some presentations uh, uh, in, in person or online, but also some recorded user testimonials. And with that, I would like to open the first user story, which is titled Use of Copernicus Emergency Management Service during Sleet in Slovenia, that will be presented through a short video. Um, and we have uh, the pleasure to have here Katja banovets Juroš, the administration from the Administration of the Republic of Slovenia for Civil Protection and Disaster Relief of Slovenia, and Ms. Ka uh, Kaja Kandare from Slovenia Forest Service. And with uh, this, I would like to ask uh, the short video.
At the end of January, Slovenia challenged, was challenged by a struck of heavy snow and heavy sleet. And such a situation had lasted for about six days, causing a heavy power shortage in approximately 25% of the country. After that, the temperatures suddenly raised and caused a flooding in the area of Southeast um, Slovenia. I'm not sure whether the sound and due is to this complex situation, Slovenia was the first time in the position to apply for the international assistance through the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. Satellite measurements were performed in the radar spectrum with the 3 meters ground resolution and in visual spectrum with the 1,5 meter ground resolution. About the selected parts of Slovenia, data on floodplains was obtained from the Terrasar X Cosmos SkyMet and radar SAT 2 satellites with measurements in the radar part of the spectrum and additional image of the spot 6 satellite in the optical part of the spectrum. Such data is extremely important for the monitoring of flooded areas during different precipitation events. In February 2014, Sentinels haven't been launched yet, but we were eagerly expecting the first launch of the first Sentinel satellite only a couple of months later. So the first maps, which were available within two to three hours after the scan, were used by responsible authorities for the first assessment of the situation on the ground which in combination with data received from other sources have decision makers on national and regional level to lead the response of the teams on the ground. Both about mentioned uses of Copernicus data also contributed to the safety of the citizens of Slovenia in both regions, in Eastern and Western Slovenia. With new Sentinel missions and other functional improvements of the Copernicus Emergency Management Service, the provided data will be more accurate and delivered with shorter time frame between, between order of the service and scanning of the terrain. With more precise and reliable maps, also the response of the rescuers and other services would be more efficient. Thank you very much for the video. And uh, I saw that uh, some people could not hear the sound. I hope that uh, that uh, with the next video, we will be all able to, to hear that. But we have Kaya and Katya with us, so they will comment uh, on the video. We will have the second user story, Copernicus for Lisp Basin Water Management, which will be uh, shown. Uh, and then we will have opportunity to see also uh, uh, here on, on the video, Sarah Duvernay from Sim Sagel and Stephanie uh, from uh, Batison from iCube Certit. So uh, with this, I would like to ask uh, again uh, for the technical support uh, to show us the video. So the challenge for my organization is collecting flood data on a 1800 square kilometers river basin. And during or just after an event, we have as a second territorial level organization, little or partial feedback from local authorities. They are busy dealing with the crisis and its consequences. Fieldwork is time consuming and risky during the event and traces of high water levels are cleaned very quickly after the flood. Processing feedback is a very long and interferes with ongoing work. The potential of Earth observation imagery to support disaster management has been demonstrated for a long time. It complements field information and modeling. Copernicus Sentinel imagery is particularly appropriate for Lisbon Basin flood management and was used during a demonstration done in real condition during the flood event of end January 2021 in the Lisp Basin. Certit Rapid Mapping Service processed this data to provide to Simsagel emergency products highlighting the flood extent and impact in rush mode. Thanks for this technology, we have an emergency flood map available 12 hours after the peak of the flood. So it helps uh, 
crisis management teams prioritize the intervention following flooded events. And then we have uh, wide scale information in uh, rural areas. And even with some post treatment, we get information in urban areas instead of uh, the partial uh, information we got uh, previously. So the main benefit of uh, Copernicus data for us is providing comprehensive feedback. It helps public authorities and stakeholders prepare for natural disasters and we can raise awareness of flood risk to the general public and its representatives. Last but not least, it provides guidance documents to point out key spots for damage reduction. In the future, we want to implement satellite-based flood mapping for all significant slow-rising floods. Then we need to complement this for rapid flooding with the drones or other technology as they are developed. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting video and, uh, and sh showcasing in both cases uh, how Copernicus data really helps uh, on the regional level uh, and how it is actively used. I'm very sorry that uh, some people couldn't hear the first uh, uh, first video with the, with the full sound. I do hope that uh, the second one we all heard well. Uh, I confirm from my side that it was, uh, it was working fine. Uh, but uh, now we have the opportunity to, to hear from Katya and Kaya uh, themselves. So please, can I, can I give you the floor first, uh, Katya? Yeah, thank you, Veronica. Uh, I would like to, to, to re-emphasize that uh, the story was from 2014, after the heavy slit in Slovenia, and, uh, which was followed by floods. But we had another triggering just the last year that we, our administration as a national focal point for Copernicus, work closely with National Forestry Institute and with Kaya herself. And I will give the floor to Kaya to say a couple of sentences about that last triggering on, of, of Copernicus with Sentinel satellites also. Kaya, Kaya please. Thank you, Katya. So in February 2020, severe forest damage was caused by two wind throws on the same location within a few days. So the most affected uh, areas were forests close to the Slovenian National Airport. Due to the restricted airspace, our only option was using satellite data. So CIMS assessed the forest damage and impact of the wind throw on the forest asset using satellite data. So the results were important to understand the geographical extent of the forest damage to locate the major and possible forest damage at the tree level and subcompartment level and to assess the affected growing stock at the stand level. Uh, in the future, with such information, we are able to better organize the workflow of felling trees, uh, har harvesting wood and as well the vegetation restoration. And within the two months, usually we should provide uh, the restoration uh, and recovery plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have these two wonderful examples and it would be very good to hear also from other regions. So uh, whether you how you co how you cooperate also within the region using Copernicus data, but also between regions in regional cooperation, which is really important that it fits into also the global response to, to adaptation and, and preparedness. So I would like to uh, ask uh, uh, everybody to, to join in and uh, and uh, and uh, join the discussion uh, in the chat. Uh, we could also uh, have a little more to hear uh, from, from Stephanie uh, or Sarah on their project because we are uh, uh, doing very well for time. So maybe Sarah, would you like to come in first and also look at the interregional cooperation? Okay, thank you. Uh, so this, uh, this first work we did uh, with a CERTIT uh, was uh, very uh, useful in January. And we had the occasion of uh, going further uh, with another uh, governmental uh, agency. And uh, we were able to have uh, much uh, more precise flood maps with uh, lots of post-treatment and uh, expert uh, treatment of the of the data. So it's uh, an ongoing work. It's uh, already been a very useful first. Thank you, 
Sarah, thank you very much. So now we have a perfect uh, space for discussion and, uh, and I would like to open it to you participants uh, to share your experience uh, on your organization. How do you coordinate with other regional administrations? Any observations, any comments? I don't see anybody, so hopefully you will come with the next uh, round of, uh, uh, of case studies. So please think about it, uh, how you cooperate and also perhaps what you would like to see in addition to what you have and, uh, and how you cooperate. Uh, so the, uh, the, next, uh, the next part, now we will fo focus on further, further experiences and uh, political statements. And I would like to introduce the first political statement by a member of European Parliament Yunus uh, Omarie, uh, through video, who is the president of the European Parliament Committee on Regional Development. So can I ask for the video first? Aujourd'hui, toutes les régions européennes sont impactées par les conséquences du changement climatique euh, déjà euh, en cours. Et les îles euh, en particulier sont particulièrement euh, vulnérables devant les conséquences du changement climatique. Je pense bien sûr au secteur du tourisme concerné par l'élévation du niveau des océans. Je pense aussi à l'intensification et à la multiplication des phénomènes climatiques extrêmes comme les cyclones tropicaux. Ces combinent en réalité tous les impacts, toutes les conséquences du réchauffement planétaire. Et c'est un défi pour le développement régional que de pouvoir y trouver des réponses. La question du changement climatique, de ses conséquences et celle des catastrophes naturelles bouscule toute la politique régionale et nous devons nous adapter à cette nouvelle donne. Et c'est pourquoi nous avons mis sur la table, j'ai mis sur la table une proposition pour offrir aux régions d'Europe les moyens de s'adapter au changement climatique. Nous devons aujourd'hui avoir de véritables stratégies régionales d'adaptation au changement climatique à l'échelle européenne, accompagnées bien sûr de moyens. Et c'est pourquoi nous demandons un fonds régional européen d'adaptation au changement climatique pour que des milliards d'investissements puissent être réalisés à la fois pour tempérer les impacts des, euh, du réchauffement planétaire et en même temps pour aider les régions à amorcer les transitions nécessaires. Copernicus est extrêmement important. D'abord, pendant les crises et les catastrophes climatiques, en fournissant un certain nombre de données qui permettent d'aider dans les opérations de secours et les opérations d'urgence. Mais surtout, Copernicus fournit des données absolument fondamentales pour penser le développement régional à un horizon à moyen terme. Nous avons cruellement besoin de données pour penser le futur des régions d'Europe. Et les données fournies par Copernicus sur les zones littorales, les zones maritimes, les zones forestières, nous permettent d'anticiper et de mettre en œuvre des politiques qui s'inscrivent dans le moyen et de le long terme. Thank you. And with that, we will hear another political statement. And I'm uh, very honored that we have here online uh, Mr. Theodoros Papadopoulos, Mayor of Termi from the Central Macedonia region in Greece. So, Mr. Mayor, please, uh, over to you. Good morning. Kalimera Putin Elada από τη Θεσσαλονίκη και από τη Μακεδονία. Με μεγάλη μας χαρά συμμετέχουμε σε αυτή την εκδήλωση και σας ευχαριστούμε πολύ για την πρόσκληση. Ο Δήμος Τέρμης είναι ένας ημιαστικός Δήμος. Απέχει μόλις 5 χιλιόμετρα από τα όρια της Θεσσαλονίκης και έχει ποικίλο εδαφικό ανάγλυφο με πολύ μεγάλη οικιστική ανάπτυξη. Από την περιοχή του διέρχονται οι τρεις μεγάλοι αυτοκινητόδρομοι προς τα ανατολικά από την πόλη και στην περιοχή του Δήμου μας λειτουργεί το αεροδρόμιο Μακεδονία της Θεσσαλονίκης. 
Ε, α, τα χαρακτηριστικά αυτά αναδεικνύουν τη σημασία της ρήπανσης του περιβάλλοντος που προέρχεται από τη μια από την οδική κυκλοφορία και από την άλλη από τα, το, τα καύσιμα, την καύσιμη ύλη που χρησιμοποιείται στην περιοχή γενικότερα. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, from Hellas, from Thessaloniki, from Macedonia. It is a great pleasure to participate in this Copernicus webinar and we thank you very much for the invitation. Therme is a semi-urban municipality located five kilometers from the city of Thessaloniki with a variety of terrain and significant residential development. Large motorways pass through the area of Therme and Macedonia Airport of Thessaloniki is located here. These characteristics highlight the importance of environmental pollution resulting from road traffic, but also from the fuel used for heating. Τα ορίμωνα σωματίδια έχουν αναδειχθεί σοβαρός ρηπαντής με επιπτώσεις στη δημόσια υγεία, κυρίως για τις ευαίσθητες κατηγορίες του πληθυσμού. Γι' αυτό λόγο αυτό συμμετέχουμε μαζί με το Πανεπιστήμιο των Πατρών στο πρόγραμμα μέτρησης και παρουσίασης σε πραγματικό χρόνο των συγκεντρώσεων σωματιδίων στην ατμόσφαιρα. Αφενός μεν για να ενημερώνουμε τους πολίτες όπως έχουμε υποχρέωση για να ξέρουν σε τι περιβάλλον ζουν, αφετέρου να σχεδιάσουμε πολιτικές οι οποίες όταν εφαρμοστούν θα κατατείνουν στην άμβληση του προβλήματος συνολικά. Ε, βέβαια, περισσότερα στοιχεία θα δείτε και στο βίντεο και θα αναπτύξει ο συνεργάτης μας και επιβλέπων τις όλες τις προσπάθειες, ο καθηγητής του Πανεπιστημίου Πατών, ο Ανδρέας Καζαντζίδης, που είναι μαζί μας. Εγώ από πλευράς μου, αφού σας συγχαρώ για την διοργάνωση, θα ήθελα να ευχηθώ και καλή επιτυχία στις εργασίες. For this reason, we participate with the University of Patras in the program of measurement and presentation in real time, concentration of particles in the atmosphere, to inform the citizens and, of course, in order to use the conclusions to make politics to reduce, diminish the problem, whatever it happens. More details about the program, program of course, will be presented uh, later in the And also, Professor Kazantzidis, who is uh, we cooperate together, uh, is going to give more details. On my behalf, I would like to congratulate you for uh, all your works and wish you every success. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And we will hear more uh, from Terme uh, in a bit. Uh, so first, uh, I would uh, like to introduce another user story, Protection of European Cultural Heritage from Geohazards, which will be presented by Daniele Spizzicchinio from the Italian Institute for Environmental Protection and Research, ISPRA. So please, Daniele, over to you. Good morning to everybody. Uh, my name is Daniele. I come from Italy. I'm an environmental engineer and I work in the Institution for Research, Environmental Research and Protection in Italy, the Geological Survey of Italy. And my speech is about uh, our story because we developed uh, during the last uh, five years, more or less 2015-2019, a project uh, dealing with the protection of cultural heritage from uh, GeoAdza. So please, uh, can you show the, the, the PowerPoint and go to the next slide? Title, the next one, please. Okay, so the, what about the challenge? Uh, in, uh, during the, our project, the challenge is that it's quite clear now the effect, the direct and indirect uh, impact of uh, geohazard on cultural heritage. And it's quite clear that are worsened by the climate change effect. You can see some, uh, no, some example coming from a different part of Europe and world concerned by thermal stress. Uh, and, or, uh, for example, the, the, the sea level rise about, about the, the the vegetation, the, the coastal erosion. So we, we work a lot in different parts of Europe uh, and we touch with our hands these, uh, these uh, effects. So what about the, the, the use, the base solution of satellite data? Next slide, please. 
we in the in the in the project uh, we we work a lot with uh, satellite data uh, especially with the radar data so our uh, focus is the whole europe uh, so the unesco heritage side of europe and we develop uh, uh, using uh, sentinel uh, data sentinel one data as well as contributing mission to uh, make some uh, analysis concerning the potential uh, deformation ground motion affected uh, um, cultural heritage and uh, some uh, morphological process next slide please but of course our analysis is not finished by the end the end of the project we start to continue this analysis by uso, using also multispectral and hyperspectral uh, image uh, also using uh, data service and product comments from uh, all uh, copernicus family to take under control the main uh, parameter affecting the, the, the heritage site. Next. So what about the, 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 the benefits to the citizen? Of course, Portego's goal was to enhance cultural heritage uh, management practice at national level, no? reinforcing institutional support and governance through knowledge and innovation. Uh, the project as well identify, assess and monitor risk with the aim of strengthening disaster preparedness for heritage, of course, uh, in the future. The project, uh, promote, the project promote also the, an interdisciplinary and collab collaborative research and uh, uh, development activities, transferring the highest level of knowledge, quality and standard from space and her science to cultural heritage conservation science. Next one. So what about the, the outlook uh, to the future? Two, two main outcomes. The first one, we want to, to promote this new holistic approach, no? a sort of new paradigm, because we have to uh, work together with uh, climate and earth science, earth observation and a high city domain, jolly with conservation sites. So the, the most important thing is uh, identify the world heritage site, most vulnerable, phenomena induced and worsened by climate change and strengthen a system for continuous assessment, monitoring and early warning of the impact. Fully incorporate uh, the latest climate and earth sites in earth observation approach models into the adaptation strategies as well as into the world age size in nomination, inscription and management, management production. So uh, an agreement amongst uh, all the European institutions on the use of satellite service for monitoring geohazard affecting cultural age will help uh, define best practice guidelines and standard methodology for adoption by practitioners in the field. Last sentence is that at the moment uh, there is, uh, you know, for the radar uh, satellite product and evolution, we are uh, testing the European ground motion services so we are able now to pass from static map of geohazard affecting heritage to a dynamic one. So at the moment, at European level, at national scale, we are able to implement dynamic monitoring thanks to the implementation of Copernicus data and service. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniela, and we will have opportunity to question you also and, and uh, ask you further questions. But uh, let's uh, hear uh, let's hear the the, the next uh, user story, and we can have a small discussion afterwards, uh, which is mapping real time airborne particle pollution, uh, which will be uh, from uh, from the municipality of Termi. It was we had uh, we had the introduction from the political level, uh, and we will hear now uh, from uh, Miss Maria. Uh, Grigor Aridu and uh, Professor Andreas Kazantzidis from the Laboratory of Atmospheric Physics, University of Patras. So, Maria, first over to you. Uh, my, uh, I am a civil engineer and work uh, at the municipality of Therni. <coughs> is not my major of the environment, but uh, we work together with Professor Kazanzidis and uh, uh, we try to measure all the, <coughs> the particulate uh, uh, matter in order to find out uh, uh, the, when 
the concentration in the atmosphere is so big and uh, will affect uh, the citizens. What we are going to do is to uh, introduce uh, uh, students from uh, uh, schools yeah, in order to uh, uh, make measurements, uh, give them a, 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 a address and address for a long Yes, uh, I, I'll continue from here because I, I cannot I cannot hear you very well. Uh, so uh, the uh, the program uh, started uh, some years ago at, uh, uh, from the University of Patras, uh, and the, the idea is to try to give real time information to the students about uh, uh, urban particulate matter. Uh, in this frame, uh, there are there are two. Uh, three components, that is the in situ components that gives you the real time information. The other one is the Copernicus that uh, uh, gives you uh, the forecast, but not the detailed information in a neighborhood, neighborhood scale. So you combine both of them in order to make it to give personalized forecast to the citizens. And after all, we have also the uh, the involvement of the citizens and especially the younger ones in this program. So they have mobile stations, they have the ability to measure indoor air quality, compare Copernicus with uh, uh, in situ data and uh, make their own project. So it's a holistic approach uh, uh, that is uh, uh, focused on the needs of the municipality and uh, the people there. Thank you very much both. And now we will see the video that will demonstrate it all. So I would like uh, uh, to uh, the technical team to put the video up. The Dimos Thermis is an experiential Dimos in Thessaloniki. Είναι από τους λίγους Δήμους στο νομό Θεσσαλονίκης που ακόμη και την περίοδο της κρίσης παρουσιάζει αύξηση του λιγισμού. Τα τελευταία χρόνια τα ερώμενα σωματίδια έχουν αναδειχθεί ως ένας από τους βασικούς παράγοντες που επηρεάζουν την ανθρώπινη υγεία. Οι επιπτώσεις θεωρούνται ιδιαίτερα σημαντικές για τις ευαίσθητες κατηγορίες του πληθυσμού, ιδιαίτερα για τους πολύ μεγάλους και τους νέους. Σκοπός της δράσης είναι η συγκέντρωση, η εκτίμηση των συγκεντρώσεων των αιωρούμενων θεωματιδίων και ειδικά αυτό που είναι επικίνδυνα για την υγεία, για τη δημόσια υγεία με αξιόπιστο τρόπο και η παρουσίαση του σε real time με εύκολο τρόπο ώστε να ενημερώνονται άμεσα οι δημόσιες. Η τεχνική λύση περιλαμβάνει την ανάπτυξη ενός δικτύου μέτρησης των αιωρούμενων θεωματιδίων με τη χρήση οργάνων μέτρησης σε όλη την έκθεση του Δήμου. Επίση, χρησιμοποιείται κινητό σταθμό με σκοπό την εκτίμηση των χωρικών και χρονικών διακυμάνσεων του, την εκτίμηση τη επίδραση των σημαντικών πηγών ρήπαξη και τη διέρευση τη διασπορά του από τι πηγέ προ του αποδέκτε. Σε συνέργεια με το επίγειο δίκτυο, χρησιμοποιείται η προγνώση του προγράμματο Κοπέρνικο για τα ερωμένα σωματίδια, όπου εφαρμόζονται αλγόριθμοι για την προσαρμογή των δεδομένων στι μετρήσει του δικτύου. Συμπληρωματικά, Χρησιμοποιούνται μετρήσει από του δορυφόρου 1, 2 και 5π για την ανάλυση των εκτιμήσεών μα. Η χρήση τη πρόγνωση των ερωμένων σωματιδίων από τον Κοπέρνικο μα δίνει τη δυνατότητα να έχουμε άμεση και ελεύθερη πρόσβαση σε ένα αξιό προγνωστικό μοντέλο, χωρί να χρησιμοποιούμε δικά μα μέσα. Βέβαια, ο Κοπέρνικο δεν μπορεί να μα δώσει δεδομένα σε λίγο οικισμού, αλλά η κρατογενή πληροφορία είναι απαραίτητη για τη συνέργεια με το επίγειο δίκτυο. Επίση, το σύνολο των δεδομένων που χρησιμοποιούμε από το Κοπέρνικο μα δίνει τη δυνατότητα να δούμε σε ποιο βαθμό η ρήπανση προέρχεται από πηγέ εκτό Δήμου, που δεν μπορούμε να κάνουμε κάτι, και πόσο συνεισφέρουν οι τοπικέ πηγέ. Όσον αφορά τα ωφέλη, το πλέον σημαντικό είναι η ενημέρωση των πολιτών μέσω τη ιστοσελίδα και τη εφαρμογή για κινητά τηλέφωνα για την ποιότητα του αέρα, όπω ορίζεται από τον Παγκόσμιο Οργανισμό Υγεία και τον Ευρωπαϊκό Οργανισμό Περιβάλλοντο. Υπάρχουν περιπτώσεις 
που συνδέονται με την εκτεταμένη κάψη βιομάζας για θέρμανση ή από δασικές πυρκαγιές που η άμεση πληροφόρηση είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντική για τους πολίτες. Πέρα όμως από αυτό, έχουμε το πλεονέκτημα να γνωρίζουμε σε κάθε περιοχή του Δήμου τα επίπεδα των δικτών ποιότητας αέρα. Όμως το πιο σημαντικό βήμα είναι η ενεργοποίηση των πολιτών στην επιστήμη της ποιότητας του αέρα με τη χορήγηση φορητών σταθμών μέτρησης σε σχολιά και περιβαλλοντικές ομάδες που θα πραγματοποιούν δικές τους μετρήσεις με βάση προγραμματισμό που θα έχει επιστημονική βάση. Thank you very much for another very interesting uh, case study. And, uh, and I do apologize, I didn't uh, put the video up front uh, before, before I started uh, asking you, Ma uh, Mar Maria uh, and Andreas, uh, but uh, it, was, it was great to hear also from you uh, in person, your comments uh, on this. Uh, so we had uh, another two user stories, and so now we have time to, uh, for discussion, for your questions or comments uh, from, from audience. So please use this opportunity. We had really, really interesting for different uh, case studies from different regions. So please let us hear from your regions or from the same regions. How do you work together? How do you work independently? But how, how do you use Copernicus data to prepare uh, for natural disasters? So the floor is open, please do use it. And I would also like to ask the team to, to highlight if I'm missing anything, uh, Roya Margarit. Uh, is there, are there any questions? Doesn't appear yet. Um, maybe I would uh, use the, the opportunity to, to use the presence of the political representative here. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Do, uh, Ver Veronica, maybe one question to, to yes. the mayor since he is still in our company uh, and it's a question from the Nereus team. We would like also to, to learn from him if uh, he shared his experiences with other mayors in Greece. Um, I can tell it also in, uh, in Greek, um, uh, also to, since Andreas is there as well. Ε, Μαρία, η ερώτηση είναι αν, ο, αν έχετε μοιραστεί τις δικές σας εμπειρίες όταν χρησιμοποιείτε τον Κοπέρνικο με, άλλες, ε, με άλλους δημάρχους στη, στην Ελλάδα, με άλλες περιφέρειες, με άλλες πόλεις. Επειδή είναι, θα έλεγα, πολύ μικρός ο χρόνος που εφαρμόζουμε το σύστημα και έχουμε πάρει αυτή την πρωτοβουλία, ε, δεν το έχουμε συζητήσει ευρύτερα κυρίως στα όργανα της αυτοδιοίκησης με άλλους δημάρχους. Ε, όμως γνωρίζω ότι το Πανεπιστήμιο Πατρών έχει πάρει την ίδια πρωτοβουλία ε, καταρχάς στην Πάτρα, αν δεν κάνω λάθος. Από εκεί έχει ξεκινήσει ε, αυτή η διαδικασία. Ε, όταν ε, ολοκληρώσουμε ε, αυτή τη διαδικασία και βάλουμε όλους τους μετρητές που θέλουμε και ενεργοποιήσουμε τους πολίτες στο βαθμό που θέλουμε και συνάγουμε Βρίσκουμε συμπεράσματα τα οποία θα οδηγήσουν σε πολιτικές οι οποίες πολιτικές ε, μπορούν ε, να βελτιώσουν την κατάσταση ή να μειώσουν το πρόβλημα ε, που υπάρχει αν υπάρχει εκεί που υπάρχει τότε φυσικά θα μοιραστούμε αυτή την εμπειρία και θα προτείνουμε και στους άλλους δημάρχους να το εφαρμόσουν και στους άλλους δήμους γιατί ε, όπως α, Ακούω και όπως ακούτε όλοι σας, ε, η, τα μέτρα για την κλιματική αλλαγή που απασχολούν τόσο πολύ κυρίως την Ευρώπη ε, θα πρέπει να ξεκινήσουν ε, όχι από πάνω προς τα κάτω αλλά από κάτω προς τα πάνω, δηλαδή από την αυτοδιοίκηση τη, τη, τη χαμηλότερη μορφή διοίκηση σε κάθε χώρα που όμως έχει και την μεγαλύτερη επαφή με τον κάθε πολίτη που ζει στο, στον οργανισμό. 
have uh, started with this. Uh, Sure. Uh, we uh, maybe, maybe, Maria, sorry to be closer to the microphone because we cannot hear you. Yes. Uh, the mayor says that uh, uh, it is uh, not very long time that we have started to work with this project. So we haven't uh, uh, talked with other uh, municipalities or other mayors. Uh, but uh, when we will finish and we have uh, uh, many conclusions, uh, he, of course, he will uh, speak with them and we, he will try to uh, cooperate. He says, though, that uh, Professor Kazantzidis, he knows that Professor Kazantzidis from uh, the University of Patras uh, has worked on the same project or a similar one in Patras and uh, to other municipalities, so he can uh, uh, help us with this. Uh, he can give us uh, more, uh, Professor Kazantzins can give us more uh, uh, information about it. Uh, the mayor says also that uh, uh, when uh, uh, we finish, we will have uh, many uh, conclusions and uh, uh, will make politics to diminish the and reduce uh, the uh, atmospheric pollution because he believes uh, strongly that uh, it, the local authorities are the ones that uh, should uh, uh, work with this problem uh, and all the solution will come from the regional, uh, from the regions and the local authorities than from the central government. If, if I may add here just for, for, for a minute, uh, that uh, uh, Mediterranean is a boiler for atmospheric pollution. You have a lot of sources. It's a, it's a, it has, uh, sources all year round uh, from uh, uh, biomass burning from fireplace in the winter, especially in, uh, uh, during and now after the financial crisis with Sahara dust outbreaks. Uh, with uh, fires in the summer, you probably you all see the, the great fires in Greece this summer. And uh, in this case, in this case, uh, the, the, major, the municipality of Thermae is has all the the platform and all the dissemination tools to the public. And uh, most probably, uh, we will present this in uh, in a forthcoming uh, congress of the Greek mayors uh, next. Uh, summer and uh, that is uh, dedicated on, on uh, climate change. Thank you very much. That was very, very helpful, very interesting. And we actually are ha having a follow up question here. A uh, question from Mark uh, from the audience. Uh, in the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service, uh, we would be very interested in any feedback that Professor Kazantidis, so uh, uh, and Andreas, uh, again for you uh and the people and the representatives of the municipality of Termi have on the use of comms forecasts okay. may i will take over because it's it's technical uh, question here uh actually uh, copernicus atmospheric monitoring service provides uh, a lot of information for a bucket of uh, uh, atmospheric uh, pollutants we are concentrating on airborne particulate matter and especially the small ones that are more uh, uh that uh, are, are very important for health, uh, especially for the elderly and the young children. Uh, we use the Copernicus monitoring forecast uh, because it provides us the, the overview of, uh, of on the atmospheric uh, conditions uh, in the area. Uh, the forecast is about 10 by 10 kilometers. So, as I said before, it cannot give us the, the information at neighborhood scale, but we applied the, uh, the calibration of the Copernicus, we validate the data and we do all the down, down, uh, down scaling process in order to, to give the personalized information at uh, uh, the 17 uh, uh, small, uh, smaller areas that, uh, that uh, um, the municipality of Fermi includes. Thank you very much, Andras. And uh, utilizing on the presence that we still have the political figure here, Mr. Mayor, could we ask another question? Uh, what would you say that was the most difficult uh, in, re uh, in implementing the project? Uh, and how do you think it will be implemented uh, 
in the long term, uh, taking into account uh, uh, the, the workflow of, of, admin, of, of the administration. So what was the most difficult in implementing the project? Okay. okay. Maybe I, I will also have yes. to take this one because I'm, I'm the technical coordinator of, 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 of the project and if the mayor would like to add something, he, of course he's, he's more than, uh, than welcome. Uh, actually, there are, um, uh, there are not so many difficulties. The citizens here, uh, here at Thermi accepted the, uh, the program uh, very well. We have a lot of volunteers that they, they want you know, to, uh, to, to use uh, to establish station at uh, uh, their own uh, uh, houses uh, to try and extend, expand uh, the network. Uh, also, we had a, a very good uh, collaboration and feedback for, from the schools. Uh, it seems that the younger ages are, uh, are, you know, are more open uh, to, in, uh, in such a project. Uh, maybe the, the, the challenge here is uh, the sustainability of, uh, of uh, the, the whole uh, area uh, network platform. And uh, I suppose that the, the future for such a system is uh, to be included and be an important part uh, of uh, what are called smart cities or what we used to call now intelligent cities. Uh, so air pollution <laughs> is part of the intelligent cities and this is the road to sustainability for such a platform. Thank you very much, Andras. And uh, another question, sorry, <laughs> to your direction, uh, Mr. Or Mr. Mayor or the team, Andreas or Maria. Uh, could you please uh, describe us a little bit more, um, because the Greece went through a uh, terrific, uh, really horrible forest fires uh, this, this summer. Um, how would you describe the division of competencies uh, uh, in, uh, in this particular respect uh, in, in forest fires? And was there any lesson learned from this experience? Um, from, from, sorry, I, I also haven't understood the question. It's about what uh, less or less from the uh, from yeah, the summer fires. The forest fires, uh, the dealing with the forest fires. How how were the responsibilities uh, on uh, on the regional level, local level, national level, and what was the lesson learned? From from this. From the scientific point of view, uh, the lesson learned is that, uh, uh, as, as, as I said before, that uh, uh, air uh, pollution coming from, from such sources, sources uh, affects uh, the, uh, all regions. Actually, uh, we had uh, some uh, uh, terrible incidents of multi multiple fires across Greece, and uh, uh, our network across Greece showed that most of the regions had been affected. Um, I don't know if I can say more, uh, in, get something more in more detail about uh, uh, the competencies or the lessons learned for regions and uh, municipalities. Uh, we're lucky that, that Thermi didn't have uh, uh, such strong events, uh, either for pollution, either for fires. Especially South Greece has been affected uh, in in a great in a uh, in a vast way. Uh, from from such, such a catastrophe. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Andreas. And uh, from the political from, from the political level, Mr. Mayor, would you have any comments um, and uh, and uh, and some experience to share? Okay, you repeat from the point of view of the responsibilities, competencies in the forest fires. Είμαστε από τους Δήμους που τα τελευταία χρόνια, τα τελευταία 20 χρόνια περίπου, δεν έχουμε ούτε μία σοβαρή δασική πυργαγιά, παρά το ότι ο Δήμος μας είναι 400.000 στρέμματα, είναι αρκετά μεγάλος Δήμος, δηλαδή, σε έκταση. 
Ε, δεν είχαμε ε, μεγάλες πυρκαγιές, κυρίως γιατί έχουμε αναπτύξει σε τέτοιο βαθμό το μηχανισμό της πολιτικής προστασίας που πολύ εγκαίρως παρεμβαίνουμε σε ό,τι συμβεί. Να φανταστείτε ότι φέτος είχαμε ε, 63 πυρκαγιές συνολικά, εκ των οποίων περισσότερες ήταν δασικές. Καμία όμως δεν εξελίχθηκε σε σοβαρή ε, πυρκαγιά που να δημιουργήσει ζημιά στο φυσικό περιβάλλον. Ε, ε, οι περισσότερες ε, έκαψαν από ένα έως τρία στρέμματα γης ε, δασικής βλάστησης. Δεν είχαμε λοιπόν εδώ στην περιοχή ε, πυρκαγιές που να επιβαρύνουν το περιβάλλον. Δυστυχώς όμως στη χώρα είχαμε τεράστιες πυρκαγιές. Ήταν μία από τις χειρότερες χρονιές που έχουμε περάσει και κάει και ένα πολύ μεγάλο ποσοστό της δασικής έκθεσης, νοτιότερα βέβαια, ε, όχι εδώ. Ε, θέλω να σας ενημερώσω ότι τα τελευταία χρόνια η αυτοδιοίκηση, ε, εκτός από το μηχανισμό τον κρατικό που είναι και ο καθήλυνα αρμόδιος, όμως και η αυτοδιοίκηση ε, επικουρεί, ε, έχει εξοπλιστεί και με διάφορα ευρωπαϊκά προγράμματα, αλλά και με ίδιους πόρους, με μηχανήματα και έχει εκπαιδεύσει το προσωπικό, έτσι ώστε να μπορεί να ανταποκριθεί σε μικρής κλίμακας, βέβαια, πυρκαγιές που μπορεί να παρέμβει και επικουρικά να βοηθήσει πραγματικά. Δεν μπορώ να σας πω κάποια επίπτωση που να με, είναι μετρήσιμο από το σύστημα που έχουμε εφαρμόσει στην περιοχή μας, γιατί δεν είχαμε καμιά σημαντική πυρκαγιά στην περιοχή μας. Uh, mayor says that uh, over the last 20 years, uh, we didn't have any uh, big uh, forest fires in our municipality. We had, uh, this year, he said, we had uh, 63 fires, but we could uh, 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 they, they didn't become large because we have uh, uh, our uh, municipal uh, 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 people that work, servants that work and uh, can uh, uh, confront them and uh, they don't became, become large. Uh, though in uh, Greece we had uh, many large fires and you know that uh, from the news. Uh, a very big uh, uh, part of uh, the forest, a very big percentage of the forest has uh, a, a big catastrophe, but uh, the local authorities help very much uh, the state uh, uh, fire workers and uh, they had uh, the ability to confront all the catastrophe from the fires. Επίσης, το δικό μας δεν έχει καταγραφεί. Επίσης, το δικό ότι στο σύστημά μας, μέσα από τις περικαγές που είχαμε, δεν έχει καταγραφεί καμία επίπτωση, γιατί ήταν όλες μικρές κλίμακα. Μπορείς να τις συμπληρώσεις. Αυτό είναι πραγματικό. Πρώτα, όπως θα καταλάβετε, είναι το σύστημα προτεκτικής system at the municipality is uh, very well established with a lot of uh, volunteers, if I may add, also. And uh, what is also important that uh, the, take into account these precautions me precaution measures, uh, we didn't, uh, re um, didn't uh, measure any impact in the uh, air quality in, uh, in the municipality, because uh, most of the fires uh, have been, uh, have been uh, uh, in, uh, uh, have, have affected only locally and for uh, a small amount of time the, uh, the conditions uh, or uh, the air, air quality conditions. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're very lucky this year, but I think that the, it's not only a matter of luck, it's, uh, only a matter, it's, it's a matter of uh, taking the precautions and it's good that, that we have a system that can uh, can measure that, uh, and as I used to say, you cannot manage something if you cannot measure it. 
and uh, probably this is a very, very well take home message. And uh, uh, this is maybe one of the uh, most uh, important, uh, I, I, let's say, uh, the most important usefulness that you get from, uh, from comparing it. You can go further in a few days before, uh, 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 before and get the focus, but we can, we can have the feedback from the other satellites and see uh, what is happening, assess our methodologies and, uh, and go for, for the next steps. Absolutely. Thank you very much. That was, uh, that was very interesting. Before we move on to the last uh, contribution, I would actually ask to, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Daniele, uh, bef before we get to the last uh, statement, uh, what did you find most challenging? Um, I think that now we are working in several uh, uh, projects now dealing with Earth observation. And one of these, uh, the name is uh, EO4GEO, that comes from Erasmus Plus program. It's clearly analyzed that at the moment we have uh, a big request for people uh, that are uh, able to use this data, analyze this data, perform processing, also disseminate and explain this data. So we have a, a strong increase of request of this kind of skill, but at the same time, at the university level, at the, you know, at the private sector level, there is no offer about this skill. So uh, one of the main problems, I think, is the lack of uh, some uh, skill competence on this issue. So we have a lot of information, a lot of data, but at the same, uh, at the same time, we have to in increase and to grow the academia, the university, to work on this issue to uh, implement the skill dealing with this uh, very, very important and challenging um, domain of uh, Earth observation. Thank you, Daniele. So now we will move again to the political sphere. We will go to the European Parliament and we will hear a video statement uh, from Jutta Paulus, a member of the European Parliament Committee of on Environment, Public Health and Food Safety. Good day. Thanks for inviting me to this very interesting Copernicus for Regions webinar and for giving me the opportunity to speak on the topic on how Copernicus supports Europe's regions to improve prevention and preparedness for, to natural disasters. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Jutta Paulus. I'm a member of the European Parliament and I'm sitting with the Greens European Free Alliance since 2019. I'm a member of the Committees on Environment, Public Health and Food Safety, ENVI, Industry Research and Energy, ITRA and Transport, TRAN. Unfortunately, I'm not able to join the webinar because I have to attend the ENVI committee meeting physically, which is taking place at the same time. Since I will be working on the upcoming methane and on the nature restoration legislation, I have decided to focus my intervention on these two topics as the looming climate and biodiversity crisis will be the ultimate form of natural disasters. Thus, any form of prevention and preparedness or adaptation is key. Ever since I joined the European Parliament, I'm advocating for the EU to reduce methane emissions as soon as possible. Why? Because on a 20-year time frame, methane is 82 times as strong as CO2, according to the latest IPCC report. And the International Energy Agency's methane tracker estimates that around 40% of energy-related methane emissions can be abated at no net cost just by fixing methane leaks and eliminating vents in the fossil fuel sector. And here's where the Copernicus program and the Atmosphere Monitoring Service comes in because detecting and monitoring global super emitters as well as the smaller scale sources are of utmost importance. If we want to reduce our emissions, we need solid data and effective global monitoring. And here the satellite data of Sentinel-5 allows independent verification of a company's footprint and facilitates the engagement on mitigation. The European Parliament has just adopted 
our own initiative report on methane, I'm very proud that we managed to secure a strong language, especially on imports. You know, 90% of the EU's oil and gas are imported. And we can only combat those leaks which occur outside of our borders if we have knowledge on where do they occur. Unfortunately, the climate conference in Glasgow did not agree on targets that would have limited global warming to 1.5 degrees and therefore action on reducing methane emissions is ever more important because it is a short-term climate force. Of course, we have this global methane pledge which was initiated by the EU and the USA, but first of all, it's toothless. It doesn't have any ways of legal enforcement. And secondly, the aim is to reduce the emissions by 30% only by 2030, and this is not enough. We need binding targets for the energy sector, the waste sector, and the agricultural sector, and then 45% would be possible, and this is what the United Nations Environment Program has calculated in May, and they also have calculated that this will, will enable us to reduce global warming by 0.3 degrees Celsius, and this must be our ambition. On restoration, you may know the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, EPBIS, the counterpart to the IPCC, they have reported that more than one million species today are threatened with extinction. Extinction is the most irreversible thing you can do on this planet and therefore we have to do everything to prevent it. One way to do it is restoring our nature. This restoration would have additional benefits because our ecosystem provide a wide array of essential services. Food, water, breathable air, fertile soils, mitigating natural disasters, pests, diseases, and helping to regulate the climate. So if we really want to improve prevention and preparedness to natural disasters, this is where we have to start. As you might know, the Commission is planning to come up with a proposal for a nature restoration law, and the implementation of such a law will need massive amount of knowledge and data and monitoring. And here, of course, Copernicus can play a vital role in providing overview, mapping and real-time information concerning our ecosystems. There are already a lot of products and projects which are derived from our precious eyes in the sky, such as the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service, the Copernicus Marine Service and the Copernicus Climate Change Service. A product which I want to highlight is the NATE2K, Natura 2000, from the CLMS, which provides detailed land cover and land use mapping results. It covers a large number of grassland-rich natural 2000 sites as well in a two-kilometer buffer zones around the sites. And these products can play a key role when it comes to protecting our Natura 2000 areas and also, of course, when we want to restore degraded ecosystems. As this is a real big task, we need all help we can get. And in this regards, I would support establishing citizen science programs where every interested person can get involved and help protecting and restoring. Pure data alone can't always provide the valuable inputs. We need the brain power to analyze and contextualize them. Therefore, we need more staff and not only infrastructure budget for the managing of the Copernicus program and in order to open it up to the public and also more staff for our precious European Environment Agency in Copenhagen which always provides us with brilliant reports, first-hand knowledge from its experts. If we really want to improve prevention and preparedness to natural disasters, that is where we have to start. I wish you a successful event, fruitful discussions, and please do not hesitate to reach out to me and my office via email for any follow-up questions. Have a great day. Thank you virtually and uh, on distance uh, uh, to, for this very strong, very powerful message uh, from, from, uh, uh, from Ms. Paulus, uh, MEP. Uh, there were lots of uh, lots of points that that she raised. Uh, very global.
focus, uh, which uh, I'm very happy that uh, lots of them were mentioned, including the methane emissions, uh, which uh, featured a lot at the at COP26. Um, and uh, we are very happy that the International Methane uh, Emission uh, Observatory was established uh, earlier uh, in October to uh, to deal with uh, global emissions uh, uh, to, to to reduce uh, methane emissions. But there were many many more hints uh, that uh, Ms. Paulus uh, made. So I would like to use this these last few minutes that we have to open the floor again uh, for discussion. And I can see that we have uh, we have a few comments uh, now. Um, uh, now, uh, can I ask uh, all of you that who presented uh, for your for your feedback uh, on what has been discussed uh, so far? Uh, but um, uh, could you comment on the process to uptake the use of the data? Uh, Ms. Powers also mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the, the citizen science, which is very important uh, area as well. Uh, what, uh, what was uh, that uh, helped you to use the data? Uh, would you use, would you give advice for other agencies or other users how to use Copernicus? So uh, choose whatever element you want from this, uh, but it would be really good to hear your, your feedback, uh, any of you. So please, uh, uh, maybe we can uh, maybe we can start uh, with uh, with Katya and, and and Kaya as you were the first speakers. Uh, thank you, Veronica. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. I mean, uh, this was a very valuable, uh, let's say, meeting. Uh, unfortunately, virtual, virtual. And I would like to go back to the last presentation by by uh, Miss. Uh, Paulus, uh, she emphasized a very strong, important uh, issue that is uh, climate change in relation in relation to to uh, natural disasters. I mean, it, they used to say that it was not eighty. Now they already say that ninety percent climate driven uh, natural disasters, and the situation is getting worse as we know. So, actually, this uh, the use of Copernicus in this in this story it's very important for of course from the data point of view but uh, we have never never forget that we uh, from uh, let's say bottom up uh, approach we as individuals have to do our work as citizens as professionals as parents as any any role that we play in our life to stop this climate uh, climate change threats and uh, yeah and make our world a safe place to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Katya. Uh, Kat uh, Kaya? Yes. <laughs> any, any last comment? Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, can I comment something about our data? Yes. Yes, okay. So uh, for us, it was very important to get um, to get uh, feedback from uh, Copernicus. So um, in Slovenia, is is covered sixty percent with forests. So for us, forest is very important source. And in the last years, we had several natural disasters like wind throws, um, and um, also. Um, how is it? Um, um, sorry, Katia. Slit. 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 Okay. Sleet. And also slit in the forest. So it would be important to have um, more people educated in, as well in Slovenia with experiences with the remote sensing data, how to use it. And to be able to. Um, uh, to work with such data by ourselves, because in this situation, uh, CIMS uh, provided um, analysis for us. So it would be very helpful if we would have our own people that could take the raw data and make analysis in the future by 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 uh, us, um, because such events are happening very um, frequent frequent. So. Um, Yes, it would. 
yeah. <laughs> it would be very useful if we would be able to um, analyze such data. Thank you, Kaya. And Stephanie, can I ask you, what was that helped you to use the data, Copernicus data? And was it easy? Yeah. Good morning, was it everybody. Easy? <laughs> um, can you repeat the, your question, please? Uh, what was that helped you to use the Copernicus data? And was it easy to use the data? Yes, it was easy because um, um, my uh, company works uh, in rapid mapping uh, uh, for natural disaster uh, uh, for years now, and uh, we we have um, we use uh, Copernicus data uh, in the Copernicus Emergency Management Service, and um, this service is not open to to local uh, and regional uh, authorities. That's why it's important to propose uh, specific services uh, to this uh, local and uh, regional uh, users, such, such as uh, SimSagel uh, for us in France. And um, one uh, of the challenge in uh, natural disaster uh, monitoring is always, in, uh, specifically for flood, is to to take the the picture at the right time and uh, in case of flood it's uh, at the moment of the flood peak and uh, thanks to copernicus data uh, we improve uh, the and their and their uh, revisit uh, frequency we improved uh, the results um, we had more chance uh, to to have uh, an image uh, at the right time to to of the of the event. Thank you, Stephanie. Very quick question to Daniela. Uh, what would you what would be your advice for other agencies how to use Copernicus? Can you <laughs> is it simple? Is it is it short answer question? <laughs> It's not, it's not easy to, to, to answer to this question, of course, but uh, um, in order to use uh, the, the most possible um, um, data from Copernicus uh, program, of course, uh, and the different agency, is that they have to, from my point of view, follow it, always the, uh, you know, the update, the upgrade, the, the, all the evolution of the, po of the, of the program. Maybe also stay in contact with the user forum from uh, each country. Okay, that is a link among the agency, national agency, and the European agency. Okay, the European program. And let me add that, uh, for example, in Italy, we are using in a very strong way two uh, different uh, Copernicus uh, program options that are the Academy and Relays Network. Because using this uh, two network, Copernicus network at national level, we are able to, from one side with the academy, to uh, our, uh, influence the evolution of specific university uh, uh, learning, university um, earth observation uh, course. And with the relay, we are able to uh, inform no public administration, uh, startup, uh, private company about the use of uh, Copernicus. No, I'm I'm just uh, remind your your comment concerning the uptake of the, the 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 use of Copernicus services and data. So I think that another option uh, to 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 support uh, agency and public and private uh, uh, company at national level is to use these two network. No sometimes combine combine together this network uh, by for example organize a seminar a workshop or webinar in which at the first part you uh, uh, disseminate you present the opportunity of the copernicus program and in the second part of the webinar you you can choose a specific uh, domain concerning i don't know rivers uh, monitoring or coastal or uh, you know different ground motion and to uh, implement and to produce some uh, some infor specific information on how to use and how to manage the data. 
Thank you, Daniela. And I think with that, uh, we reached uh, the time limit that we have. We uh, actually stretched it a little bit. Uh, so thank you very much for your patience. I would like to to to, to use this opportunity to to make uh, four super quick points uh, uh, inspired by the presentations that we had, uh, either the presentations uh, uh, through PowerPoint or video messages or the, your reactions, uh, your you speakers, uh, contributors, and the political statements. Um, it's clear that we need uh, data, we need science, uh, Copernicus is providing it. Um, we need to embed the data and science in decision-making process. Uh, we also need the, sci the, the citizen science, uh, we need to uh, inform uh, people and work, work with people to, so, so that we reach the, the preparedness. Uh, we need functioning early warning systems Hence, we need the data, uh, and um, and we we know we have to also know how to use the data, how to access the data, and and how to work with it on the policy level so that it has the impact. And of course, what was also uh, discussed uh, during uh, during the session was clear responsibilities and competencies. I think we are leaving all of us uh, today from this webinar with quite a lot of thoughts that were provoked uh, by the presenters uh, and through the case uh, case studies. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to hear more about this. And many thanks uh, to the organizers. It was a uh, it was it was very, very interesting uh, setup of, uh, of various uh, points uh, that uh, how, how we need to adapt, react, prepare. And uh, with that, I would like to thank everybody, all, all the speakers and contributors, uh, and of course, uh, the organi organizers. And it was a privilege for me to facilitate this. And I do apologize for the time stretch, but uh, it was really nice to, to, to hear the, uh, the feedback from the audience. And please stay with us. And as uh, Roya said at the beginning, please do follow the forthcoming webinars, uh, which are very exciting too. So many thanks, and, uh, and I'm wishing you a good day, wherever you are. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Many thanks. <laughs>